everyone, welcome to a new episode of Velocity Kinetics. Just going to go for a little drive to be honest, uh, more because it's any payday and bonus time of year and I was going to treat the Swayce to a full tank of Shell Optimax uh, 99 ROM. Um, probably going to start calling these videos the Swayce cast to be honest because there will be a little bit of topic about my Swayce and I need to stop my music. Rookie. Error. Uh, there will be some talk about my about my Swayce and just some general comments and talking about stuff that's going on and things I've noticed in the world of motoring. So, like I said, we're probably going to call this a Swayce cast. It'll probably have minimal editing because, uh, you know, free thought and all that and just free flow dialogue. So what day is it today? Today is the 17th? Uh, without stopping to check my watchables. Yeah, the 17th. So 17th of March today, as we record. Uh, so update on my Swayce. So we're at 29,850 miles. Um, well, as we, as that's just ticked on to 29,850. Uh, yeah, I yesterday I went to John Banks Suzuki to have a conversation with the with the dealers. Not because they'd done anything wrong. I'd been contacted to say that as part of uh, the event sale event weekend that I'd be eligible for certain extra discounts and bonuses and so on and so forth. And I thought it doesn't hurt to have a conversation. And it really doesn't, because I, I wasn't going with the intention of, but it would have been a happy bonus if everything lined up for me to get a new car, or newer car, and, you know, delay all my servicing balloon payment and so on. So, went to the dealer, they only had one Swayce, uh, apparently they've been selling really well, which I can believe, because I see quite a few of them around Berry St. Edmunds at the moment. They had one Swayce, it was an 73 plate, so it was 18 months newer than, sorry, two years newer than this. Um, and it basically had delivery miles on it, it was, what, 402 miles or 412 miles on the clock is all it had. It was what they call, apparently called a static demo, a static demonstrator, so it basically sat in the dealership, it didn't really do, do much else. It was one of the ones where it wasn't an SZT anymore, it was the Motion, uh, and it was one of the ones with the power, with the fewer extra toys and the power increase, which is what I, I'd like. And it was in Misha Blue, which is the blue I'd actually originally ordered for, for, for this car. Uh, but due to reasons, they didn't have any blue ones in the UK at the time, so I had to settle for black. Unfortunately, the numbers just didn't line up. He was able to give me more money on trade-in for this uh, and basically make it so I'd only have about £1,000 negative equity, which is not ideal regardless. Negative equity is never a good thing. But the monthly payments would have been too high. It would have been about 450 quid a month, um, which is what I currently pay for between a loan I took out that financed part of the deposit for this um, and it also tied up to a couple of credit cards when I took it out. Um, plus my actual payment for this car, so I'm paying not too far short of that anyway, but if the loan was finished, then yeah, I could have entertained the idea. But without it, it was just, just not hope and hell. As, uh, the guy was really nice, a guy called Stephen, really good, usual good service from Suzuki and John Banks. Oh, I'm approaching them. I nearly had a shunt in the roundabout about to go around this morning. Um, so I've obviously had to come back the direction I'm, I've just come from and I just dropped Sarah off at work which as we're approaching that's the immediate 90 degree left so I was having to do 270 degree right. Unfortunately we might get, you might possibly get a good demonstration of this today as we get round, go round. Traffic coming from that way seems to think that these brake lines are optional and this cash kai just kept coming I actually had to come to a complete stop on the roundabout whilst it was my right of way and all 
my right of way, had to come to a complete stop because, well, this, I wouldn't be doing a Swayze cast now if 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 um, if I, if I hadn't come to a stop. We'd be it would be a video of watching me cry that my car had been written off or badly damaged or what have you, which potentially might get more views anyway. I'm kidding, I don't. I don't care about views really. I just do this to give my my brain something to think about and something to do. It was absolutely. The guy didn't even flick. The person on the cash didn't even flick a look my direction. He just kept coming, and he was doing. It re this this thing really pisses me off to the nth degree. I'm using that term a lot recently. He was. He was holding his steering wheel from where I was sat. It appeared to be doing the Fast and the fur Furious pose. And I don't know about anyone else, but when you do that full-on Fast and the Furious thing, I have no, I have no control over my car. It, it, I can't keep it very straight, or any move, movements I make is very violent. Yes, sometimes, I, as probably is demonstrated in these videos, I do sometimes just drive along with one hand, as do many people. But I do stick to the ten to two, ten to well, actually more quarter to three than ten to two. But I do stick to keeping a very safe motion on the on the wheel, and I do try to keep doing things like the feed and shuffle. And I know sometimes, like I've just done there, you do need to almost do a Fast and the Furious uh, grab. But that there are times where go, doing that motion, especially to feed. Is uh, is is accepted? Oh. Okay, right. That's not what I wanted to see. All right. I was going to go by the cathedral, but it, the road's closed this morning. I wonder why. Oh well, I'll just go up. Just go into the middle of the town square. But it's also got me thinking that actually so many people's driving standards as a whole and I've talked about this with my mum quite a lot because I, I, I get her opinion on it because she does quite a bit of driving these days and it's also it's one of these things like am I just am I just in two in my own head on the subject or you know is it a case of no actually people's driving standards have gotten worse and I do I do think and feel that actually driving standards are just worse. That's the be all and end all, the long and the short, whatever words you want to describe it as, that is the end of the matter. It, it is it is the that is the end of the conversation. Particularly since COVID, people's driving standards have gotten worse. I've been trying to do some research in this. I haven't been able to find anything that I would call a creditable voice. Oh, has they done? Sorry, I'm just passing. This building, you might just about see it. This building here used to be the branch of branch of the bank I work for. I work for, and that's the branch I worked out of a lot. And it's a beautiful little branch, Grade Two listed building. Not practical, realistically, no, not practical for a for a bank to stay in there long term. But. It was a charming little branch, beautiful little customer base, and it's a shame that we had to close. But at the same time, our customer base just paid in and we drew cash when we had customers come in. And I, that's the one thing I could not get our customers to understand as we were closing, apart from the fact that they st there was a change, what I would describe as a change in the guard. Some of the old staff took VR, and with the amount of money they were going to get, it's just it was just sort of, well, that just makes sense, money. Um, and someone else went off for a promotion at another branch and someone else, uh, she left to go to uni. All more than perfect reasons and more than valid reasons for someone to choose to, to, to leave. But then when the new guard took over, and I wasn't exactly new guard because I'd been going to that branch for about a year, 18 months on and off. Just to uh, just to assist when they were short staff, because living in Risby, we were only four or five miles away from Barry St Edmunds, um, and it meant my commute was only a few minutes and a few miles instead of the twenty plus miles I was doing and near hour drive. So yeah, it's it's uh, interesting to say the least. Um,
but as a, but back to what I was talking about credible about a credible source I I feel since the rise of things like TikTok Facebook reels YouTube shorts or those Instagram well I don't know what is it just Instagram videos I don't know um, videos that are about 30 30 seconds to a minute long I feel like people's attention span has just been rotted to its core and why do I use the word rotted? Well, every once in a while, I inadvertently get on a YouTube shorts scrolling thing, and I'm then suddenly like, what the hell am I doing? And what, and want to stop, and then do find a way to stop. Um, and somehow I've wasted 30 minutes doing, doing that. And I do feel that my attention span at times, because of doing that, is next to non-existent at times, or at least compared to what it used to be. And then obviously, if you think about it, when you had lockdown, people were watching... If it wasn't for lockdown, TikTok probably wouldn't really be that much of a thing, because it never was that much of a thing, at least in the general zeitgeist of the, of the social media genre. It was not that much of a thing, but people having nothing to do, and then people doing all these dances for positivity and things, and for some reason during lockdown, I don't know about if anyone else had the same thought, for some reason during lockdown it suddenly became important that you were able to dance upstairs. Don't know why. Never was a thing, apart from for small children who are having competitions because little children compete. So I have no doubt I danced up the stairs in some weird competition with my sister and brother at some point in the past. Nice bit of indication, mate. But I just feel that people have become more entitled in, in, the, in their driving these days. Pe uh, people are more entitled, they're more bullish, they're, or like to bully people more, they're less patient, speeding is that much more of a problem now than it ever used to be. I know people go on, oh, fucking pigs are out fucking this with the fucking that and the fucking got fucking use of the fucking taxpayers' money. I know it's used fucking quite a lot, but you you know, you see the, 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 the gammons who go on about it. And like, haven't you got any real crimes to detect? And it's like, what bothers me with that? Right. The road I'm driving down now, when I was a child, it used to be a 50 in the middle of the town. And then it dropped to a 40. And it's been dropped to a 30 at some point when I was living in the northeast. But when I was, uh, but considering I lived in the northeast for 12 years, 13 years, it's been, and I've lived here for five years, nearly again, back back down south for nearly five years now. Oh no, wait, no, sorry, nearly four. But still, it's been a 30 for, it's got to have been a 30 for at least 10 years, if not more. Yet people will still fly down that road as if it was the old speed limit. Car park that I use on a, on a Saturday, St Andrew Street in Bray St Edmunds. It has been a one-way car park for 15, 18 years now. People still drive round it as a two-way car park, ignoring all the signs and people saying, just flashing their headlights and honking on saying, you're going the wrong way. And people are just, I know, I know there's lots of memes and things that say, yeah, people are the worst. Or the classic Scrubs one, which I can't remember if it was Kelso or Dr. Cox who said, you know what people are? Bastards. Bastard coast, bastard coated bastards with a bastard filling. And how very right they are. Uh, right. Where am I going to go from here? I'll take a toodle out the back. But I'm, I've, I've had enough of the decrease in standard of driving, because I don't get, don't get me wrong, UK insurance seems to be its own weird and wonderful thing. One well, wonderful is a sarcastic term. It's its own weird, weird thing, where we seem to be willing to pay hundreds if not thousands to keep our cars on the road and some of from what I gather some of our European counterparts do not pay a fraction of what we pay to keep cars on the road that's not even that's not even factoring in road tax or anything like that so you know we've got we 
we, we've got this weird and wonderful insu- uh, way we do our insurance, and then like, I know for some people, and I've said it in the drive school video, my insurance nearly doubled the other year, and I think it's because of people doing stupidly silly daft things like that. You know, I I get that we all run out of patience. I get that sometimes we don't know what the speed limit is because we haven't seen the sign. Um, whether that's you're going too fast, typically, or too slow, like I did in the, in the last uh, time I was doing a video whilst I was driving. Oh, that's new. But... But I can't help but feel we've shot ourselves in the foot. People will complain left, right and centre. They go, I don't trust the banks, I don't trust the insurers. When they start putting the money up and up and up, it's like it's a case of, okay, how about <clears throat> how about if everyone drove a tiny bit more considerately? Not masses, not masses. Just a teeny tiny tiny whiny little bit more considerate. Do you know what? I think we'd find insurance starts going the other way. We've got more and more people driving around uninsured because it's so expensive. But if people were a little bit nicer behind the wheel. And a little bit more patient. Heck, an example I've used multiple times is the number of times I've, I've, um, I have, been trying to park, and I've just not been allowed to finish my manoeuvre because people seem to seem so impatient. On it, it seems completely beyond them to wait. 30 seconds not even 30 seconds it seems completely beyond them to wait whilst I finish parking I've got to get through this village quite quick so these people know my dad not that that's a bad thing but I just don't want I just don't want to see them straight bit of road. Let's see if we can drive fast and furious. Oh well, no, this is wrong. Oh, whoa. No, God, no. I feel like I'm going It's ridiculous. I realise I've just flaked as I've done that. So, no more uh, jump at the hut. I've just had enough of the of people not having patience. I'm, I'm becoming impatient with people's impatience is probably a good way to describe it. I, you know, if it takes me 30 seconds to park, then deal with it. If I'm choosing to reverse my car in, it's because it's easier for me to reverse my car in. And for the most part, in a lot of car parks with this car, it really genuinely is a lot easier for me to back the car in than it is for me to put it in forward and reverse out. Typically because, when I, I, like when I go to town on a Saturday morning, I go to town when it's quiet, so I go in first thing in the, uh, in the morning. So by the time I'm leaving, it's getting busy, and it's hard to reverse out at that time. It's hard for me to reverse out at that at, at, at that time, if you're even given afforded the opportunity to reverse out. It's been often enough that I haven't even been offered the opportunity to reverse out. I've been sat there for five minutes whilst people, in turn, have dithered. Whereas it's a case of actually, you know, if you gave me five minutes to back out, not one, five minutes, gave me, gave me thirty seconds. Yes, I do realise the mic just fell off. If you gave me 30 seconds to get to back out, not even 30 seconds, you could have my space. World keeps on ticking along. Bish, bash, bosh. JD, job done. Thank you very much, Governor. Good night and God bless. But people won't. Two more. I love a vol. Fucking hell. You can expect to see me dad around here at the moment because. 
is I'm sure he's doing a service there today. Um, but you know, like I've said, I've just I just can't. I've had enough. I've had enough of it. I just want. I just want to be able to drive to know, like in the, in the speed limit, for example. This is a 30 through this little village of Horinger. It always has been 30 in my entire lifetime of coming here. But people still try and push you through it, and it's one of these things like I might be, I might feel like the road could probably cope with a 40, potentially, but. There's no guarantee it can, and you know that's what it's. That's what. The, the, at the end of the day, that is what the it's what the speed limit is, and the same when it's on long stretches of road that are 40, 50, or even roads that are wide enough they could have made them do two lanes and made them 70, but they've they've kept them narrower and left them at 60, or at least made them very wide single lane at 60. You know it. it it's. It's um, it's it, it is what it is. It is what it says. I I don't make the rules. I just got to follow them. And it's the same. And it's the same everywhere. Whether you're talking about whether you're talking about uh, customers doing the whole Karen thing. It's like, look, I, I can't bend the rules. I've got to follow what has been set out in front of me. I feel that some of this bullying mentality has come around with cars getting bigger and more bulky, especially with the rise of the SUV, etc. Um, that's what's contributing to some people be people are able to be a bit more willing to trade paint than they ever used to be, which I, d I don't understand why people are so willing to do so. so willing to do so, especially when it comes at the cost of, well, the, the amount of money it comes at the cost at, and potentially life insurance, and just about any other many a myriad of things. I, it's also what's making, it, some of it is what's making me nervous about what I would choose for my next car, if I, if I choose to do anything with it. Because <clears throat> I would never wish to be seen as an aggressive driver, and I, I, man, as you've just seen, I do like to put my foot down and get it up to speed. But actually, we've been at a pretty consistent speed the whole way through here. I think that actually there might not might have made a mistake here. I don't think there's any turn-offs until we get to Haverhill or Haverhill, Haverhill, Haverhill. I don't know what it's called. See on the on the on this cam that the roads I'm going down now aren't the greatest. They're not very wide. There's no white line down the middle, so it's barely wide enough for two cars to safely pass. We do have passing spots, but these are a lot of the roads are, that are around where I live. And I'd like a car like the Swace that's sort of low. The Swace is surprisingly nimble around these uh, around these roads for what it is, as in, a, as in it's a big semi-executive estate with a big battery pack and things it's not it's not really built for for back road blasts as much as other things that are available are and with Sarah wanting to go with an SUV it's like okay yeah I wouldn't potentially say no 
because some of these roads are terrible and they are prone to, to flooding. But imagine now I've got I'm now able to I'm able to cruise behind these horses on electric only. They're gonna be a lot less spooked because I'm on electric only. But imagine if I was in some great big thumping clack 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 diesel vehicle. The road's not wide enough for me to attempt to attempt to pass. She's saying come by. for a few minutes. Not the end of not the end of world. CVTs is probably not very good about passing horses because it always wants to put the engine in the best mode for best power. I might have to pull over somewhere and work out how to bloody get back home because I, I, I have no idea where I am. All roads will eventually lead to home. What a long swayce cast this might make for. Also people like people out walking their dog first thing on a Sunday morning. Plot now, what the hell I was talking about? Oh, yeah, what I would potentially like to replace my car with, but some of this would just not be possible in an SUV. But some of this road would have been a hell of a lot more comfortable in something with a bit more dampening and things. Bring it back round, actually. I realise I never finished my point about the swace, so I, uh, I've ultimately decided not to not to go with that swace. Uh, the other problem with it is because it's classed as used, it's on a used finance interest rate which is higher than if it was new. Now new is apparently 7.9%, so actually I'd be paying more for it new, regardless of the actual cost. Oh, this is actually Chevington. I'd be paying more for it because of the interest rate. I'm on 5.9 with this and 7.9 for, for a new one. Eh, no thank you. But the used one would have been on 9.9. .9. What have we got this way? Saxon. Newmarket, no, I don't want to go all the way to Newmarket if I can avoid it. It's on a 9.9 .9 interest rate, um, which is which is quite high, nearly, obviously 9.9 is nearly 10. But because of it being the, the XDEM, they were able to do something with the finance where they've got permission for that car to basically put it on a lower finance than they would do normally. So normally it would have been about 12, 13, maybe even 14%. So, in act actually, if I was in position to buy it, it would have it would have actually been all right. Gone a bit Suffolk there. It'd be all right. It'll be all right, my old lover. It'll be all right. But I'm not in a position to do so. However, and Sarah did admit it probably would have made a lot of sense. 
if she had, if she had passed a test and we were looking to buy for uh, for her actually that probably would have made a good purchase we would have probably done a, we would probably would have dual wielded swaces briefly enjoyed the perks of a new one. Oh, that stupid Volvo should have been further over. There's other thing on some of these back roads, regardless of what size vehicle people are driving, they might make no attempt to stay on their side. Some people really don't. dare want to do fast and furious driving on this road although this is a back road in the arse end of nowhere and it's far less rutted and potholed than some of the main roads around where I live in Wellneatham ah, give way okay right I believe that'll be a right for me won't it Some, there might be some national trust out there. It might be cool to go to. Oh, I like my history. I like my history. There's a lot of lovely historical places around where I am in Suffolk. But uh, we would, Sarah agreed that it would have been we would have dual wielded spaces, and then we would have then given us time to work out what to do with this if we do anything with it. Because there's nothing wrong with having two of them. Just two very big cars for not any real need. And then it's a case of well, what, what, what we would have traded this in for. I've just realised I've ignored my own advice by not... Oh, well, it may be a tiny bit too hot on such a narrow road on that corner. Not too hot as in... Not too hot as in uh, too fast. Or out of control. Just too hot as in... Probably should have just eased off. Just a, just a tiny whiny bit. So what I do love about driving around these Suffolk roads, and I, I, and I do I do say the same about a lot of country roads as well. I thought it was a pigeon ahead. Um, I do say a lot about country roads at this time of year. I do love just driving down roads and they're just lined with daffodils. You don't need to be a nature lover or anything like that to appreciate just how lovely it can look. So what potentially then are we going to do for Sa for Sarah when she when it passes her test? Well. Again, ignored my own advice. Think further ahead, god damn it. Feel like uh, Mark Harmon Gibbs in the very early episode of NCIS when, when McGee sort of first joined the team. Anticipate McGee! First rules you will learn of driving all these little tiny roads. Anticipate. People, cars, tractors, sheep, deer. So what do we do for Sarah then when she passes the test? Well, She's uh, she's currently learning in a Focus, and she had been learning in a Corsa. She likes the Focus even more than she... Oh, I've got a full battery. That's the first time in ages I've had one. Sorry, full. For anyone who's got a hybrid or something like a Swayze that's got a battery, for some reason it's just oddly satisfying driving well enough that the battery icon is full. I don't know why it gives me that little sense of satisfaction, but it do. the way I've came, so we're gonna... I'm gonna come this way I think for a little bit and then we'll begin winding it back around do I wind it back that way? yeah I will actually no I won't no I won't 
before someone goes, what the hell? The reason why I won't is there's a little bridge where the train goes over and it's quite deep, it's right next to the class man's factory. But with how much rain we've had under that bridge is terrible for catching water. I've already had one wading experience in this car that I really do not want to repeat of. And it's also, I suppose that's also why the SUV thing keeps rattled, rolling around in my head. Because if I had something that could cope with doing a tiny bit, I'm not talking about full on past the fenders style wading. Or past the, you know, past the bonnet line sort of wading. I just want something that could cope a little better with doing a little bit deeper water. It's probably the best way to put it. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily need, I don't need something I can do defender style off-roading. I just need something I can cope with it. Cope with a bit more water at times. But then again, if we have a system that starts ploughing more money back into decent drainage and things, perhaps that won't be a problem. Oh, someone's fun. I always thought that was a side, just a random side road. It's actually a, effectively a, a massive driveway for a farmer. And somewhere around here, there is a horrible bump in the road. I always, even though I make a mental note to try and avoid it every time, I still somehow manage to clobber it routinely. It's, a, it's it's really bizarre, you've got a pothole, it's almost like the pothole has opened up but the tarmac's folded back on itself. So you've got a massive dip, dip and then a big bump before it comes back down to the road. So if, it, it's amazing the number of times I've driven over it in this and in my old car. It's purely, it's simply amazing that I have never busted a strut or anything like that. Although when this potentially goes up or it's MOT in uh, October, it might do. Talking about its MOT, uh, that might be when I next revisit what this car will will will, will happen. Because if the MOT is expensive and if suddenly there's a lot of things gone wrong that need repairing, then it's not economical for it to for it to stay with me. That man in that beam is doing the whole doing the whole uh, fast and furious driving. Place called Barrow. Sounds like it but should belong in the Hobbit. It really doesn't because it's full of fucking snobs. But let, let me rephrase. There's some absolutely wonderful people here. Oh, I don't want denim. I wear denim. I don't want denim. A lot of lovely people live here, but it's intertwined with an awful lot of awful snobs. Which I suppose in itself might sound like quite a snobbish remark. And you know that it, 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 it might sound horrible, but, but more because, from my perspective, if I may be willing to have my own opinion, my feeling on that is all because of being on the receiving end of them when they were my customers and they didn't like things I was saying as in they weren't getting their way. Which Surprisingly, it's quite a common theme at, uh, at times. Uh, right. Oh, that would have been... Oh, I could have still... Oh, right. Interesting, I could have still gone that way. I'll be damned. So, yeah, we're in a really odd situation with what we want to do, car-wise. Um, probably a good job I don't do pro podcasting, because we would never get to the end of what we, whatever I want to talk about, would we? Um, it's... 
a lot depends. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What this car happens in the car MOT? Well, a lot will depend on what happens on MOT. Because if it if it has a lot of things wrong, it might not be financially viable to keep. If the front tyres have gone again, was it the backs this time? Whichever set neat that was changed, not the most recently, but you know, the words, words, sentence make do good. You word person thing. If um. If, 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 say for instance, it needs tyres and I haven't gotten, uh, gotten myself sorted for that, um, money-wise that is, if, if the, they're more expensive than, I, than they could be, should be, whatever words you want to describe it as, you know, if it just becomes financially not viable, then I've got to have a think about what to do. And I do keep my eye out on things like loan offers and various finance offers and deposit this, pay that offers. But the big thing, really, was uh, during my conversation with Stephen in uh, John Banks, he said they're actually about to bring out a whole new Swace model. So Toyota are obviously doing something to the Corolla, so Suzuki will get a whole new Swace, so to speak. Which means, potentially, to get the new models out there, Suzuki and Toyota might put some insane offers on to get people to trade in to get the new cars out there. And I'm very keen to hear what those offers may or may not be. If they, uh, if they, if it even happens. Because I don't know about you, I don't, I don't need to be told twice about about something that's a good offer. It brings me back around to that blue swace. That blue swace would have been over thirty thousand pounds new, and they're selling it was was about six grand off the sale price, you know, the new price. So they're selling it for twenty four and a half, which for me, it's so frustrating that the, that the numbers don't quite line up. Because hang on, twenty four grand for that, which is nearly why I paid for this, which is about the right price point for the car, and to have a bit more power, a couple more toys. And to have a car that's 18 months newer, hasn't got nearly 30,000 miles on it, which at 30,000 miles is not actually an awful lot that's wrong with the car as such, it's just 30,000 miles worth of miles. It's just more a case of all the rubber it's used, all the tyres it's used, more tyres than money. It puts back a lot of things and it puts back having to worry about MOTs, etc. Uh, granted, I don't. To be honest, I don't see why this car would fail an MOT without me doing something colossally stupid or not paying attention to uh, to something going wrong with the car. I think I'm going to head home because I think that's been about 40 minutes now. Maybe a bit self-indulgent, but my swayce cast, my decision. Right. It's, it's frustrating because it's so that car is so frustratingly close. However, I do also want to get a private plate, um, not because I want to flex finance or anything like that. As in, like, look at me, look at how much money I've got. Or, to be honest, I think the American term of vanity plate is probably actually the more accurate term. One of the few car terms I think America's got right compared to, or at least makes sense. Shall we say? I won't say got right, but makes sense. Um, in, uh, in, that would make sense in England. But I just don't. I just want people to don't want people to know how new or how old my car is. I base. I only want like a petrol head to know, as in sort of a. They'd look at it and go, actually, well, actually, that's a new shape, Swiss, and it's got a different alloys on, which means it's this model, which means it can only be from that year. Be well done. And that's and that's that. But also because over the years, and this is something that. I hadn't thought about this until Sarah was struggling to remember the plate for this car. I've had this car two and a half years, nearly. She sometimes doesn't remember what the number plate is for this car. She 
just about remembered what the number plate was for my Belano, but I'd had it nearly four years at that point. And you remember the first car because it was the first car. But if you change your car a lot, you've got to keep remembering all the different plates. And I do find, and at times, because I'm blessed or cursed, depending on your perspective, with being able to remember things quite easily, or, you know, I can pick things up quite easily at times. I sometimes find it mad when people have, how do you not know what number plate of your car, what the number plate of your car is? when you're, say, for instance, paying for parking. But if you change your car a lot, and you don't keep the plate the same or similar, of course you're not you're going to struggle to remember. In fact, the only reason this car's probably as memorable as it is is because I chose the NZW on the plate. Because I had a car before that was NZW on its plate. That was my first Plano NX17 NZW. And whoever runs that now, I gather it failed. It's, it's failed a few MOTs. What on earth have you done to that poor thing? Although, if you do watch or listen to this, then uh, I'll, I'll happily meet you and we'll go for a go for a drive. We'll see what it see whether it still feels factory fresh. Right, that VW wants to come by. So let's come out of the way by. But it's just to make it easier for people, it's just to make it easier. But the other thing is as well, that the number of times, right, the car, the cars I've driven are not, apart from my Swift, which Swift are very popular, the Belenos, let's be honest, as good a car as they were, in my opinion, with their, and as good an engine as it had, they were never very popular. In fact, they've been very popularly used, that more popularly used than they have been new. Swayze has not been a very popular car either, at least initially, it is, it is now. But there have been so many times I've been next, I've been the car ahead, behind, or in the next lane to my brother and mum. And they haven't known it's me, which is a pain, because especially at one point when, before they had the private plate put back on the Fiesta, apparently because one, one of my parents' plates is from before the 70s or before the 80s, came off an old Triumph originally. It is, um, it's, uh, something to do with that means it can't be transferred as quickly as newer plates. I don't fully understand the ins and outs. But they bought a Fiesta that basically had its, it had its proper registration on. And I took great effort to remember that plate. They never took the fraction of the same effort to remember mine. And I would say as well, as, as a child, it made it very easy to know which car was my parents, because I just needed to look for, for ABW or LWE, and I won't say the rest of their plates. But I had to, I just had to look for those prefixes, because it was not a very common prefix. And boom, I knew where my parents' car was. Especially, especially when my dad got a silver V40, when the V40s were quite popular. And there were a lot of them, at least where we were living at the time, there were quite a lot of them around. And so it made it quite easy to spot where 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 he uh, where he was. The other V40 we had, because they had two of them at the same time, which always seemed odd to me, but I was not the one doing the buying. It, it was a weird colour and a quite unique colour, so that was easy enough. But it's just to make life easier for remembering it. And uh, we'll see what happens. There's a DVLA op auction going on uh, next week. And we'll see what I'll see what I can get, because my plan is, is to buy one and just have it on reserve. So that then means whatever the next car is that's bought will have 
that will have a private plate. Whether I prefer it for, uh, because I'm buying it for me, I would prefer it to be on whatever is going to be my car. But because I work from home, my car doesn't go very far. And even if they were to, even if my work were to say, right, everyone back to the office, which, by the way, there's no need to go back to the office. I have been, in the time I've worked from home, I, I, my, my new role, or the role I took on when I uh, left the branch side of the, of the bank, was a, a great C level. In 51 weeks, I'd worked hard enough, and this is all working from home, and I only went up to Edinburgh four or five times when I was supposed to do it monthly. I worked hard enough for them to regrade the role from a C to a D. And the only reason when the E position came up on my team that they didn't put me for it or wouldn't let me go for it is because I'd, I hadn't really proven myself very much in the role, which my manager at the time said he thought that was rob rubbish of the overall team manager. My manager's an E, what was an E, the overall team manager's an F. My, my manager, Andrew, said, actually, you've worked hard enough. You've shown you can do it. So, actually, I, I would, if it was his team, he'd have felt comfortable in putting me into the uh, E role. Why is that Kona starting to roll back? I wonder if it's because they think they fucked up. No, they just dopey on the clutch, I guess. Um, but I've done all that work from home. I don't need to go into the office. I've proven myself at home. A lot of people have proven themselves. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of people who have pissed around at home taking naps during the day when they shouldn't have but it makes you realize actually when you're working from home you don't people people don't question you don't have you don't if there's nothing to do there's nothing to do and a lot of places aren't willing to admit that there isn't always something to do and actually it's not a legal requirement for your work to have anything for you to do but it also makes you realise just how much busy work you get given when you're in the office, as given as indicated by my overall team manager, giving uh, giving us some tasks to do. That is just clearly busy work, because when we've spoken about it as a team without that manager present, it's been very much a case of, well, what's the point? Why? I don't get it. That's not even our team dream it. So as, an, as a, I suppose the second unofficial episode of the Swayce cast comes to an end, or is coming to an end, um, I would ask in the comments for your opinions on whether you like this sort of video, whether you would like this sort of content to continue. Um, actually, uh, well, I don't ignore, don't ignore it anyway, but as I'll just do what tickles my fancy, to be honest. Um, but, you know, if you don't like this sort of thing, and the relatively unedited nature of it, then please say, we'll, well, I'll stop doing it. If you enjoy it, and want more of it, then we'll see if there's a way for it to happen more. The only problem is, uh, that's now 28, so I've done, uh, by the time I get home I'll have done about 30 miles for this. And given as I've talked about trying to trade the car in, I don't want to do tons and tons of miles for, uh, for no reason. But, I can't, I can't deny, I do, I do like, I do like talking to cars, I do like, I do like driving. And I, it, whether this gets views or not, whether it leads to donations to the PayPal or not, whether it leads to, actually I didn't add the buy me a cup of coffee link on the last video. If it doesn't le it lead to any sort of donation, any sort of income anywhere, or YouTube money from anywhere, 
it would be nice on the one hand it'd be nice to have some of that money is in to reflect the time and the effort I've put in but at times like the last driving video it was just a catharsis and sometimes that's all you need you just need sometimes all anyone needs is just a vent even if it is into the void this is what I use Twitter for these days I don't really use Twitter for much else so I'll just make a tweet, send it out into the void if someone's like, yeah, I've hit it too. Then, great, and if no one else feels the same, I'm not asked, not bothered. So, we'll see, if I, if I then, if I step away from the swace, then we'll have to think of another clever-ish name for the car podcast to, to have. Um, whilst I do like the Pure Racing Fuel podcast, when I th put that together last year, it, oh no, not last, I keep saying last year, it was a while ago now, not long after Sir Frank Williams died, it's when I first did one, it's not the easiest content to make and it's hard to do on your own. But I can't find anyone who'd like to be part of said conversation. Oh, uh, there we are. But I also, I will say one thing about my content. I really, I have started to get bored of all this it's annoying because some of the people making it are really good people and they, really, they do talk a lot of sense in a, in a lot of their other videos but I really do hate these I spent £10,000 on X and what's everything wrong with my X thousand pound car it's like fucking hell you're lucky enough to have that much money to waste on that for videos and stuff where we started. It has been wonderful talking to you all. I hope we do this again some point soon. Look after yourself. Drive safe. There's not really an awful lot else to say. <laughs>